we want to say God bless you and thank you for joining us for another uh, an edition of Q&A with Pastor Don. Um, I pray your day went well and um, God's blessed you richly. Either your day is winding down and you're, at, you're starting to come home and dinner and relax or whether you're just getting started, getting ready to go to work. You know, some people work swing shifts, some people work graveyard shift. Um, and whether you uh, what live watcher or a watcher on um, later on on the replay, later tonight, tomorrow, later in the week, I want to say God bless you too as well. Uh, and and uh, again, thank God for His grace and His mercy, because it's only by His grace and mercy are we able to be here. That's we want to always remember that and keep that in our hearts and minds that you know God blesses us to see every day with new grace, new mercy, and he's good. He's really very, very good to his people. So we thank him for that. And so with that said, we're going to um, move along here and um, encourage you to invite someone uh, to watch tonight. Maybe you can text somebody or email them or, I don't know, send up a smoke signal. I don't know, however you do it. If you've got an old school phone with a cord, pick them up, call them. <laughs> But uh, let them know that the Q&A is going on, and we'd love for them to join us in the live audience here. Now, if you're watching live, you do have the benefit of being able to send in your prayer request or a question, and uh, we can receive it live. And if the Lord Jesus would bless us with the wisdom to answer that question, we would be able to do that. And, of course, if it's a prayer request, we would definitely pray for it before we go off the, um, go off the live stream. Um, but we need God to give us grace to answer the question. So if it's a question and he gives us grace, you send it in live, then we'll have to you know, bless us with the wisdom to answer it. We will do that because we never want to try to wing it when it comes to answering questions. So um, I want to encourage you to do that. Now, there are several ways you can follow along here with us, whether you are a, um, a person that watches from our YouTube platform. I want to say God bless you. Uh, and if you have not subscribed to our YouTube platform, we'd love for you to do so. If you have already subscribed, we want to say God bless you and thank you. If you don't choose to subscribe, excuse me, don't choose to subscribe, we want to say thank you and God bless you. Um, in any event, if you do watch from YouTube, we'd greatly appreciate it if you would hit that little thumbs up icon there. But if you if you do, with the way YouTube filters work with um, with our particular um, 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 Q&A if you do it right now while you're watching live then it'll automatically get wiped out so you have to wait about 45 minutes to an hour and come back and then just hit the little icon we really would appreciate that because that helps promote the videos so it goes out further it touches more people the more thumbs up you get the more it reaches people so that's if you're a YouTuber if you are a Facebook person none of that applies Facebook totally different uh, mechanism there and so you we'd love for you to share the video with your friends if you haven't joined our friends list we'd love for you to join and follow along on Facebook then of course there's the other ways um, there's the uh, uh, Twitter which uh, well, excuse me X formerly known as Twitter um, you can find us there um, at FMCC MI and that's on X which is formerly known as Twitter then, of course, there's uh, Instagram. You can find us at the same address, at FMCCMI on Instagram. Then there is TikTok, same address as the others. You can find us at FMCCMI on TikTok. Then there is the ministry's website, and that is www.fmcc-mi.com. Um, all those different venues you can... You can um, follow along you can send in your questions your prayer requests however you choose to do it through any one of those six um, um, social media venues there um, so we're welcome to hear from you either via prayer request or, or Bible or question or um, 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 a comment either way any of those ways now I do want to make a, a, a talk a little bit with the staff this is a Q&A session now, I know we put Bible Q&A, which we're going to be kind of changing that a little bit. It, it, but it is open to life questions. 
Um, a live question would be something like this. Um, I was listening to a, another situation and somebody called in. So a live question would be kind of along this line. This person had, um, they had um, some kids and their mom and dad were not married when they had, when they were born. They were never married, their mom and dad. And now the mom and dad were both married to other people. But uh, but that was and now in those marriages they want to divorce those people and then be married to each other the mom and dad and so the person was calling in saying you know these the mom and dad want to have you know interaction with their grandchildren which is this person's kids and so but one of them the dad the which is the grandfather he's always got you know different opinions and you know he kind of goes against you know, what the, the parents are teaching. So anyways, the question was, what does the person do in that scenario? So that's a life question. You know, it's pretty complicated, but it's a life question. And so we, you know, another life question, uh, well, I hear that there's gonna be a rapture and, you know, should I buy a house right now? Or should I wait, you know, what should I do? Or, you know, does God want me to own a home? Or, you know, all these kinds of things. Or, or another life question, you know, I got family members that are, that are not saved, you know, uh, should I go out to dinner with them? You know, you know, those kinds of things. You know, life questions, you know, different things like that. So this is also a platform for life questions. I mean, or I'm, I'm living with somebody right now and we're cohabitating, but we're not married. You know, I wanna get married, but they don't wanna get married. You know, we got kids together. What should we do? What should I do? Uh, those are life questions. And so that's why this is this is open to those kinds of discussions. You know, it's open to those different kinds of discussions like that. Um, you know, another example. You know, I have a relative. Let's say it's a. You know, many of you heard the term sibling rivalry. I have a sibling they haven't spoken to in 20 years. You know, and uh, you know, they out of the blue call me or text me and ask me could they meet me for lunch? Should I go? Uh, you know how you know what should I do those kinds of things you know you know I feel like I'm been you know my job for 20 years and I feel like I'm stagnant there and you know should I look for another career all these are just examples of life's questions you know should I have a should uh, you know I'm married you know and I'm I'm in my 50s now but my wife wants to have a child you know do is that a good thing you know at that point in life I'm you know, to, to start a family and I've already got adult children you know you know and then now we want to should we start a whole nother family even though we already both have adult children or I have adult children you know what should I do and so again life questions so those are some examples of some different life questions uh, there's a thousand things you know uh, thousands of things you know should I vote you know the, the Democrats the Republicans you know Republicans are chaotic the democrats is, you know it's just chaos in politics but should i get involved should i should i vote you know life questions so there's a lot of different things you know we can go to in terms of you know um you know that so that's so this is not only questions on the bible but it is also for life questions and but we will always let the word of god be the voice not my ideologies or my personal uh, preferences it will always be what does the word of god say so with that said um you know you know everybody knows what's going on in the war in israel and of course the war in ukraine and these kinds of things um what i would say to that would just simply be I know there's a lot of folks that are pro-Palestinian. There are a lot of folks pro-Israel, and you know everybody wants to take sides, you know, and who's right and who's wrong, and you know, genocide and all that. And genocide is a very strong word, by the way, but um, you know, it, it is a very war is bloody. War is doesn't really have a good face to it, regardless of what the cause is. You know, people die. Um, innocent people get killed. Uh, there, uh, there's never been a conflict on this earth or war where innocent people didn't get killed. 
Um, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a brutal thing. Uh, it never was really. It never was God's way of doing things because it was never it never was for you know, warfare and and that all came as a result of man and sin and so forth. And so, but I'm saying that a lot of a lot of us are, you know are, are really gripped now. And um, you know, the United States is getting involved there, and the, the whole Middle East seems to be on the verge of some type of you know major war breaking out there are some that are saying we're in world war three now and you know we're just seeing the beginning of it and that may be true um but I, I i would say this if we are in god then we don't look to governments for our salvation and our strength we look to christ um the druze were under tremendous uh, occupation by the romans um they were under our control for many years in their history um, and so there's there's lots of history in that regard so I, I just would say uh, we should turn to Christ in the midst of all of this you know and some people say I'm done with prayer we need action okay all right well, that's your prerogative you can do that um, but when it's all said and done it's going to have to come back there's only one God that's going to answer these things and bring whatever resolution needs to be run. Um, and so I'm not here to advocate for Israel, nor am I here to advocate for Palestine. Either way, I'm not here to advocate for either one of the groups. Um, yeah, I think what we should advocate is the nations of this world have turned their backs, have excuse me, turned their backs on God tremendously. Uh, they really have. Israel is not a Christian nation. That's a huge misconception. Israel is not a Christian nation. Less than 1% of all Jews are Christian. Less than 1%. A little, over, a little under 20% actually practice Judaism, even Judaism. Less than, a, little, a little less than 20% of their whole population even practice Judaism. Judaism is practice of the law, following the law, the Torah. Less than 20% do that. Oh, well over 20 some odd percent are atheists. Don't believe in any God at all. I'm just giving you real statistics. Don't even believe in any God at all. Um, and so Israel's not a Christian, Christian nation. Well, guess what? America's not a Christian nation. <laughs> you got a lot of churches, but that don't make America a Christian nation. America's far from a Christian nation. It's far from a Christian nation. I know they say in God we trust. Well, God just simply means object of worship. So anybody can say God. The Satanists say God. They worship the God of their, their of, of forces. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of hollow. But America is not a Christian nation. Great Britain is not a Christian nation. France is not a Christian nation. The United Nations in the, in, in where they all meet in New York, that's not a Christian organization. None of these things are Christian organizations. So if we're trying to beat the bandwagon, well, this is a Christian nation. Israel, Israel's not a Christian nation. It's not. Did God make them a promise? Yes. Does God keep his promise? Yes. But the nation as in, in, in and of itself now, it's not a Christian nation. But God's promise stands true. His promise will always stand true. It was his, his promise. He'll never break his word. He's never broken his word. And he never will break his word. Ever. That's why he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I, I just, I, before we get on whatever bandwagon we want to get on, you know, and, 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 you know, whatever platform we want to take, let's just remember, Christ is really the one we need to turn to. You know, we, we quote that scripture all the time, but it's real. If my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, and seek my face. Then will I hear from heaven. See, then will I heal their land. See, that's, that's, that's the blueprint right there. Right there. Is that going to happen? Most likely not on a national level. But is God's word still true? Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. And so I, I just would encourage us to, to not allow ourselves to get drawn into all the, the things 
We need to pray. I know the Bible says pray for Israel. You should pray for Israel. The Bible also says we should pray for kings and governors and rulers too. We should pray for President Biden. We should pray for Vice President Harris. We should pray for these different people. Nancy Pelosi, Gavin Newsom, whether you like them or not, or you vote for them or not. He said pray for those in authority. He said pray even the police. He said the police are not a terror to good works. Those who keep the law, that's not even. Ah, they're racism. They are racist. There is a lot of whatever, but you're still supposed to pray. You're still supposed to pray and um, and seek God. So uh, that's what I, I just would encourage us to do, whether you're a believer or non-believer, whatever. Uh, we need to seek the Lord now like never before. Everybody does. needs to seek God and, uh, and, and turn to God because that's where the answers are. They're all in God. They're all in the Lord. All in Jesus Christ. So with that said, we're going to pray and we're going to get into our questions for tonight. Um, I pray that you would again uh, let somebody know about the Q&A, that they could join in along with us tonight as we go before the Word of God to answer the questions that have come in from God's people. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for tonight's uh, uh, gathering around the Word of God and that you would bless us with insight and understanding you would open our hearts to receive and we would humble ourselves dear lord humble ourselves as servants of the most high to hear from you to for you to speak through us to bless the people and then for us to have a listening heart everyone have a listening heart to hear what you have to say from your word of life for father we truly can do nothing without you Without you, we would be lost. We need you, Father. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Our first question is, can you explain Philippians chapter 3, verses verse 18 to verse 19? Okay, so we're reading Philippians chapter 3, verse 18 to verse 19. It says this, For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. So, we really, to really get, sometimes with scripture, you have to read a few verses above it, and then if, or a few verses below, to bring understanding to what, you're, what, what one verse may be saying. So let's read verse 17, which is the verse above. Brethren, be ye followers together of me, and mark them which walk as ye... Excuse me, let me read that again. Brethren, be ye followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. So Paul is saying here, follow the, the ones that have the same example that you see me and others. Mark that, or follow that, look to that. Because there's other folks that have come in amongst us who have a different view and are doing things contrary to that. So what he's so he's really saying there, he's really telling the Philippians to follow that example, not the ones that these other people are bringing in because it's kind of blended all together now. Well, scripture in the Bible talks about uh, in, the, in the Gospels, let the wheat and tear grow together. So a lot of times you'll have... Um, Different, even every in every church, no church is exempt. In every Christian setting, you have three kinds of people. You have unbeliever, make believer, and believer. In every Christian setting, in every church, yes, you have unbelievers in there. Why would you have an unbeliever in a Christian church? Because they come because somebody else is there. Because they come because their family has always been there. They come because, you know, they feel guilty. And so they come to clear their conscience. Then you have a make-believer. That's somebody that puts on a good show and says all the right things, but inside they really not believe in anything. But they, but they put on a really good show. Then you have, of course, the believer, a real believer. You have that in every Christian circle. Every circle. There's none that's exempt from that. It, almost every church Bible study you're going to have those kinds of things. The only way you'll get away from it, if you just have Bible study with yourself. And then hopefully you're a believer, and so therefore it's just you. 
But if you got other individuals involved, there's an opportunity for that sort of thing to come into play there. All right. And so that's what Paul is talking here. But many, he's talking about there are many false brethren were among them. Many false brethren were among them. That's why he said it weepingly, because it was a, it was a brokenness that some of them had turned to these ways of doing things. So let's look at a couple of scriptures to go along with that. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy. The book of 2 Timothy, and let us go to chapter 3, and let's look at verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Well, I want to make one thing clear. He said... Um, uh, for this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead silly, lead captive silly women. Well, God's not a gender bias. There's a lot of silly men too. It really is a lot of silly men. So you got a lot of men and women that get led astray by false teachings and off teachings and error and all kinds of things like that. But these people come in, they're uh, mixed in amongst the believers, amongst the believers and so paul when he's weeping he's telling them he's warning them this is what's happening even as we speak meaning at that time when paul was speaking this is what's happening you got folks in here that are that are that are that are make believers and they're leading people astray and it breaks my heart that some of you are even being pulled away into this and so uh, so that's what he's saying there let's go to galatians the second chapter Galatians, the second chapter, and let's go to verse 3. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Verse 4. But that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. So now here you got folks that, again, come in amongst the believers. And, and and their whole purpose is being in there is to kind of pull people away or bring in soul discord and all that. And so you, you have that. Unfortunately, in, in Christian circle, because we all don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, just Satan's able to weave in, weave in through things because everybody's, we're all not sealed until the day of redemption. And so being, when we're not sealed, then we can, then anybody can be turned, so to speak, if, if Satan keeps eating at them, to be an agent of the enemy and, and do things. So that's why it's, it's imperative that we, we become sealed with the Holy Spirit, you know, because that's how we get different thoughts and different this and different that. Well, I don't see it that way. I see it differently and, you know, this and that and this, you know. Um, I was reading something earlier today and it, it, I kind of felt like Paul. To be honest with you, it was something that um, someone had given me many years ago. And it was saying how they, you know, they don't see things with, you know, eye to eye with the ministry and this and that. And, you know, um, you know, they're in a whole different direction and all kinds of, this was something that, that someone gave me many, 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 many years ago and all these things. And it really, it kind of touched, it really began to, touch my heart because I remember when that person first came how they were I remember I remember watching certain things in their life develop over the years and decades and then how they were able to be turned against really what they were not they were actually already saved but they were actually able to be turned against that. And, 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 and how we, at one point, we had sweet fellowship together. And that's why Paul was weeping and about that. And as I was reading that, and this is something that happened in this, this is my own ministry. I was reading it today, and I just happened to come across it. It was something someone gave me many years ago. 
And I remember, I said, my memory started going back to remembering, you know, we had sweet fellowship together and we, we prayed together, we cried together, we, we did different things and what have you. And how Satan was able to get in there and turn the person, turn them and so forth. And they're not my enemy. They're not your enemy. They're not, they're not, we're not enemies of each other. There's only one enemy and it's the devil, it's Satan. We're not, your brother, your sister is not your enemy. They're your brother, your sister. And that's why Paul even said, brethren have come in. And so, but Satan's able to get in people's hearts. He's able to get in our hearts and our minds and just contort things. And then it kind of becomes kind of twisted. So this is what Paul is trying to warn them about right here. You know, be, be mindful of this. Uh, let's go to 1 John. First John, um, and let's go to chapter two. And verse 18, it says this. Little children, it is the last time. And ye, as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. See, they were all one group together. Now this is the Apostle John who wrote this. They were all in one group together. But yet there were some that still went awry. Some that still had a different view, different this, different that. And so he's really elaborating or kind of collaborate with whatever you want to say he's validating what paul was saying back in philippians the same thing was happening here too so it's always happened and that's what paul was trying to warn that's when that ephesians excuse me philippians 3 8 through 9 that's what he's saying there you know you have those kinds of situations in in our midst and so we just have to be watchful and prayerful and again i want to stress nobody's the enemy because they see it differently doesn't make a person the enemy. Doesn't make him the enemy. There's only one enemy, and that's Satan. He's the enemy, but he can get in people and then um, and and turn us if we don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so that's why it's really important that we go on and be filled and sealed. So that'd be question number one. Question number two: If the tribulation is three and a half years, and the millennium millennium is for a thousand years, will there be people left? from the tribulation to be in the millennium? And if not, where would these people come from? Okay, uh, now this is a question that I've really had before the Lord myself for quite a while. And um, I know there are people that believe that it's a seven year tribulation. And there's a lot of people that don't believe there's any millennium at all. Um, just like there are people that believe there's you know, no rapture or all kinds of things, different beliefs. Um, I can only share with you what I believe the Lord has given me through the scripture to share. So let's start this way. Yes, yes, the tribulation is for three and a half years. And this is why we say that. Let's turn to Daniel, the ninth chapter. Daniel, the ninth chapter, and let's do a little reading here, starting in verse 25, down to verse 27. Now, therefore, now, therefore, and understand that from the fourth of the commandment, which is the commandment to keep the Sabbath, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. A score is 20. So three score would be 60. So that's when you see, when you see us, when it says score there, when it says, and three score, one score is 20. So if you got three of them, that's 60. So you're saying that the print shall be seven weeks and three score. That's, so that's seven weeks and three score and two weeks. That's a total of what? 69. The street shall be built again and the wall, even, the, even, even in turbulent times. 26. 
and after three score and two weeks, there's still that's that's three score in two weeks. There's still seven more to go. Shall Messiah be cut off, not for himself, and the people of, of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood unto the end of the war desolations are determined. The flood there is not a flood of water. It has to deal with um, tribulation and warfare and, and lots of bloodshed and all that. And 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. One week. Now, Daniel's week that he's talking about here, these are not seven-day weeks. These are seven-year weeks. So it's not a week in like our week of seven days in one week. No, it's actually seven years make one week. That's why it's a total of 490 years that's being referenced here. But now in the midst of that last week or that last seven years, the midst of, that's what he said, and he shall confirm the covenant for, with many for one week and in the midst of the week. Well, what's the midst of a seven year week? Three and a half years. That's the midst of a week. Even the midst of a regular week, a seven day week, is three and a half days. But this case, each day represents a year in a this particular week. So it's seven years. So he's saying in the midst of that last seven years, there will be Messiah will be sacrificed, will be taken away. That's when Jesus died. That was your first three and a half years. So, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So now that's one thing. That's one thing there. Um, now let's go to Revelations, the 11th chapter. Revelations, the 11th chapter. And let's read starting in verse 1 down to verse 3. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and an angel said, Arise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city they shall tread underfoot forty and two months. Forty and two months. That's forty-two months. Forty-two months in the, the Hebrew calendar. In the Hebrew calendar, each month is 30 days. Each month is 30 days. So you end up with a 360-day year, not a 365-day year. So three, three and a half years under a Hebrew calendar is three and a, is 42 months or three and a half years. The same amount of time that Daniel spoke of in the ninth chapter, in the 27th verse. It's the same amount of time. He said, don't measure the court or any of that or the holy city because the Gentiles will trample that underfoot because Jerusalem must fall again. It must fall. And the Gentiles go in there and all that, the Antichrist and all that. Let's look. Three, verse three. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand Two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. That's one thousand two hundred and sixty days, which equals out to three and a half years in the Jewish calendar. On the Jewish calendar, three and a half. So there, Revelation eleven just confirmed Daniel nine. So that's in a brief synopsis why we say why we believe it's a three and a half year. In a brief synopsis. Now we're not here to go into a whole Bible study about. But that's just a brief thing there. All right. Now, let's deal with the thousand years. Go to Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation, the 20th chapter. And let us go to verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And for the word of God, in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, 
neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Go down to uh, verse 7 of the same chapter. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So there's your thousand year millennium. For a thousand years on the earth, God will allow there to be peace. There won't be any violence. There won't be any wars. There won't be any rapes, killings, pillaging, thief, theftery, identity theft, all of that will be no more. Perjury, all those kinds of things, nothing. There'll, because there'll be the devil will be in locked up. So there won't be any of that. All that will be locked up. So now, yes, there will be. But meaning, yes, there will be some people that's left, a small remnant, but no evil for that thousand years. There won't be any evil for during that thousand years. Now let's look. In Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. Uh, chapter 8. First. Uh, Zechariah chapter 8. Um. And let's go to verse 20, down to verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the, habit, and, the, and the habitations of many cities. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people, strong nations, shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts in those days, it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We shall go with you, for we have heard that your God is with you. So now that's, now this is dealing with um, 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 afterwards, after your, after your, after your tribulations and so forth. Now go to the 14th chapter and let's go to verse 16. And it says this, it says this, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from the, from year to year to worship the king, the king the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it and it shall be that the whosoever will not come up of all families of the earth unto, Jer unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon him shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be a plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come up to keep the feast of the tabernacles. Um, verse 19. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the peace of tabernacle. Now some people say, okay, wait a minute, I'm confused. I thought you said there was going to be peace on earth and there wasn't going to be any evil. When he gets into verse 17, that's where Satan gets loosed again. Let's go back to Revelations chapter 20. Remember, Satan has to be loosed for a small season. Revelations chapter 20, verse starting, starting in verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on, upon the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So when Satan gets loosed again for a little season, that's where verse 17 back in Zechariah 14 kicks in, where they get they start getting evil again. But that's after the thousand years have concluded. Now Satan's loosed out of captivity again, and he goes back to doing what he does. But that's just for a short season, a very short season there. All right. Um... Let's look at 
how small a group this is going to be. Go to Isaiah. Now, again, a thousand years is a good little while, so the men will have kind of repopulated some to some degree. Um, not like it is now, but it will definitely will be you know, some, some population there. Let's see. Isaiah, uh, what do I want? Chapter 1 and verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have seen as, excuse me, we should have been as Sodom and would have been like unto Gomorrah. Now, of course, we know this is a remnant saved that, that make it. We know there's a remnant of, of the Jews that get sealed with the Holy Spirit. And so it's just a remnant of people. Now, I can't tell you who it is and, you know, all that. We can only go by what the Bible says. Just a few out of everything. Who they are and all that is. But I, let me just share this. Please don't play Russian roulette with God and be like, you know what? Well, see, I'm going to be one of them right there. You don't know that. I don't know that. I know this. The Bible makes it clear. Whoever doesn't uh, take that mark gets the head cut off. That part I know. The Bible says that in Revelation 20. So let's not play re Russian roulette with God and be like, let me just gamble and I'll be one of those. <laughs> I'm not trying to make a funny, but let's let's not do that. Please don't 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 let the devil get in your brain and go like that with that way. All right. Let's go to Isaiah 65 now. Because again, we don't know. We don't know. I can't I I don't have clarity exactly who is what you know how many folks. I don't it could be ten folks. Five. That's left. I, I don't know how he doesn't say. He just says a remnant. A remnant is like a residue. That's a very, 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 very. I, I always use with my with fresh man in church. I always use this example. You know, you ever go to get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? And you might be doing a midnight creep. Everybody sleep, so you got a snack. You want you got a little snack. So you say, "Ooh, I want me some I want me a P and J sandwich." So you go get the jelly out. Everything's all good. Then you get the peanut butter can. And you can see peanut butter around it, so you think there's some peanut butter in there. You unscrew it, and not, all that is tiny little smears that got smeared all around the inside of there. And you got to scrape. I mean, you got to really, 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 really scrape just to get half of a of a butter knife of it to get on there. That's a remnant, a residue. So I, when he says a remnant, that's a small percentage, very small percentage. So let's read here. Um, Isaiah 65. Let's start in verse 18. Be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more hence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. Now, let me, oh, oh, I'll come back to that and we'll explain what that means in, in just a moment. Let's finish reading here though. And they shall build houses and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they cry, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear the wolf. Now look at this. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Two, there's no way a wolf is going to lay down with a lamb without eating it. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock and the dust shall be the serpent's meat. And they shall not hurt nor destroy any in all my holy mountains, says the Lord. So Satan is removed from causing violence and all that. So you have animals that would normally eat other animals and 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 lions that don't even have the, the bone structure in their mouth to eat straw or eating straw because that nature of killing and eating and bloodshed is removed. It's not there because Satan is removed. Now, um, so he said, now we'll go back up here because I know many of you are probably questioning. So well, why did he say a sinner? And then he say accursed? Because 
when millennium is here, everything goes back to God's original intent. Is it back to originally? That's why it says they will go up to the holy city and they will they will worship and they'll say they'll cleave to a Jew. Meaning, so what will happen is the whole system of, of, of the Hebrew system will be the system of worship. Will be that will have come back into play. Will be the be the system of worship. Though Christ will be the head of it and be the, the oh, eternal priest, they won't have to make sacrifices of lambs and goats, but that system of worshiping in Jerusalem as the capital of the world, because Jerusalem will be the capital of the world at that time, they'll come there to honor God. They'll come there and follow those customs to honor the God of gods and the Lord of lords. They'll come to do that. So now, under that, back under that, everything that was not a Jew was considered a sinner. The Samaritans were considered sinners. Sinner here is not indicative of sin. It's talking more in racial context. Like the Samaritans, the Samaritans were considered sinners. Contact info, are quiet. The, the 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 bad Siri, bad Siri. The um <laughs> the um. That's not nice. You better stop talking to me. Um. The uh, you see, how, he's not looking at y'all. See how look at technology. Look how the devil. Now let me stop. Now the devil not in the phone here. <laughs> uh, that's AI right there. See, there's the future. See, see, yeah, right. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Um, where was my chance thought here? All right, so anyway, the sinner now. So he's not referencing racial situation. I mean, uh, sin. It's racial. It's more ra Samaritans were considered sinners and Gentiles. Samaritans, because the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. The Samaritans were a transplanted group in the Jewish territory when the captivity and all that took place. And they adopted the, the Pentateuch's and then they mixed their own pagan thing in there with them. That's why they say our fathers worship on this mountain. And that, and the Jews had their mountain, Sermon Mountain, everybody, all that. So they had a lot of contention there. And that's why when Jesus spoke to the woman by the well, it was a hotbed issue there. Because they considered them sinners because they weren't Jews. In fact, in a lot of cases, they were a hybrid because you had some Jews that were left over during the captivity. And they intermingled with these people. Well, they also considered Gentiles as sinners because they weren't Hebrews. So there was so this context here is in that at respect. Not that there will be racism because there's no devil, so there's no racism. So the Bible here under the translation from the Hebrews is describing the other races because this is in the Old Testament as sinners, not as people who commit sin. Let me back that up now. Let me back all that up with scripture. Let's go to Matthew's the ninth chapter. Matthew's the ninth chapter, and we're going to go to verse 10. It says this, And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? And so, this is what Jesus said. But when Jesus heard it, heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. And so, we'll just, we're going to we'll go that. Let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians, the second chapter. Um, Galatians, the second chapter. And let's look at Galatians, uh, verse 14, We're starting at verse, verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto... No, 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 no. Um, let me go down to... Well, let me read that. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as, as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? And 15, who are Jews, who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. See, they had, it was, it was connected to Gentiles. They're not, and again, this is not getting into some sin. This is, is talking about racial now. 
even when the Holy Ghost came, he came to the Jews first. And then in Acts the 10th chapter, he came to Cornelius, who was a Gentile. And the Holy Lord had to speak to Peter to go over there to Cornelius' house. He had to go over there and so he had to speak to him to go over there. And that whole thing about when one of the one of the applications, that whole vision that the Lord gave Peter about all the clean beasts and unclean beasts coming down from heaven on the robe and on the, that, the, I think it was a sheet or a stairway or whatever it was. And he said, Lord, I've never eaten anything unclean. And the Lord said, don't call what I created unclean. He wasn't only talking about food. He was talking about people. He was talking about people because God was engrafting the Gentiles in who the Jews considered to be sinners. All right. Let's go to St. Luke. Let's go to St. Luke. And let's go to um, 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up steadfastly that his face to Jerusalem, uh, to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. In other words, they seen that he was a Jew. And the disciples... And when, the, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? See, they were Samaritans. They were considered sinners. So the Lord, is, they now, 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 what is this? John, James and John is like, let's burn these folks up, Lord, like Elijah did. But then the Lord, of course, verse 55 said, but he turned and rebuked them and said, ye know not what, of what manner of spirit ye are of. Amen. So, um, there you have it. So when he's talking about back going back to Isaiah 65, when he says sinners, he's not talking about people that commit sin in the tribulation. I mean, in the millennium, they can't commit sin in the in the millennium because Satan is bound for a thousand years. And then when he's loose, then he gets out, and then all that starts all over again. All that starts all over again. All right. So that would be question number two. Then we have like a part B to question number two. Well, will Jesus be there doing the millennium? Yes, Jesus will. He'll be as king of kings then. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that, that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And shall reign with him a thousand years. Again, Satan is locked up in hell at this time. He's locked up. So evil is vanquished from the earth. For a thousand years. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. And. Chapter 2 verse 44. And in those days. These kings. Shall, these kings. Excuse me. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall and it shall and forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it break in pieces the iron the brass, the clay, and the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made, hath made known to all what shall come to pass. Wherefore, here, hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpreter thereof. So when he talks about brass and clay and silver and gold and all that, that's talking about different empires over the history of the earth. Different empires, the Medo Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, and you know, on and on and on and on, different ones like that. Modern day uh, 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 brass, I believe it is, and clay. I believe 
play is dealing with Russia because Khrushchev, Nikita Khrushchev, the name Khrushchev in Russian means clay. In Russian means clay. And Brass was doing, he was, Khrushchev was president, leader of Russia and then Eisenhower was leader of, was the president of the United States and Eisenhower, the, the name Eisenhower means Brass. If I stand from from correct, from my memory serves you right, it's correct. So he's not only referencing these ancient kingdoms, but he's also representing rep, uh, referencing the future as well, and how it all will become under subjection to God. All of it will. So there we have that. Now go to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter two. The book of Isaiah, chapter two, verse one says this. The word that the word that Isaiah the son of Amaz was saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's host shall be established in top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it, and many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up, uh, go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they, sh and, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pronging hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Here's your millennium. All the things that are used to create warfare, weapons, he calls it plowshares and spears and all that. But modern weaponry, it'd be used for agriculture and all those kinds of things like that. So the whole nature and dynamic of everything changes back to God's original intention in the garden under that. Uh, that's Isaiah 2.4. Micah. Let's go to Micah. Go to the book of Micah, chapter 4, and verses 1 and 2. But in the last days shall it come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. There it is again. Again, this is answering, will Jesus be there during the tribulation, or during the millennium, during the millennium? Yes. Let's go to Revelations. Oh, let's go to Hebrews first. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, 22. And let's start at 22. 12 and 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of in angels, to the general assembly, and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. So there, there we go. That This again, this is talking about Jerusalem and all that as capital, the heavenly Jerusalem and so forth. Um, let's go to Revelations chapter 5. Revelations chapter 5. And verse, starting in verse 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of, thy, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall live and reign on earth so there it is again God with them here on earth but at the end again Satan is loose and they come past and this time they surround Jerusalem but then God rains fire down and burns out everything that's at the final end the final 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 end of everything then you get into the next Thing, which actually is our next question which would be question number three i have heard that jesus will not step foot on the earth until it is purified when will the earth be purified all right let's go to second peter 
2 Peter. Well, actually, let's start off here in Revelation 19 before we go there. Start Revelation 19. Revelation 19. And let's go to verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, uh, with it, he should smite the nations and should rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of God Almighty. And and he and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh, thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is talking about the Lord Jesus coming back. Now he, when this happens. This is after the tribulation and he comes back to the Armageddon for Armageddon and wipes out the Antichrist and all the evil and Satan gets thrown into the, the deal. Let's look here. And I saw an angel stand in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the, of the great God that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on, on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, see, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Look what happens though. And the beast was taken with him and the false prophet that wrought miracles before him uh, which, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that and, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that was set upon that set upon the horse, uh, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls, fowls were filled with their flesh. Now we're going to keep going. We're going down to chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain on his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and bound him a thousand years. So now Jesus comes back with ten thousands of ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on the earth. The battle of Armageddon is not really a battle like people think like they got going on all over the world now this is the lord coming back with his with his with his mighty army and they just just wipe things out real bad they just wipe it all out and so forth in, in fact let's look at uh let's see here holy spirit let me see uh what i want let me see let's here just hold on a second saints um Uh, let's see. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, let's see. Is that what we want? Thanks, man. Uh, no, that's not what we want. Um, let's see. That's what I wanted. Let me see. Uh, here is the patience of the saints, and they that are to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, and heard the voice from heaven saying, Bless us, the dead, and marriage, and the grace of the Lord. Spirit, um, but I don't want to get too far off this 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 this, this question because I was just looking for saints. I just wanted to show you another place for how how Armageddon is really just it's not like people think it is. It's it's wiped out pretty quickly. It's not a it's not a, a, a like a like some type of um, 
uh, like a modern warfare like we think. Even though the beast and all of his armies come there to fight with tanks and weapons and all that, God comes down with ten thousands of his town of his saints, and they literally plow right through all that, plow right through all that, and it just it's it's really just a, a bad and for the Antichrist rather, it's a bad situation. Uh, amen. Well, anyways, let's move on. Let's move on here. Um, so now, now let us go to um, 2 Peter chapter 3. Now let us go on to there. And let's start in verse number 3. It says this. Know that, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For the, since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. See, don't let nobody tell you that the Lord's not coming. They, people have been saying that for years, that, that he ain't coming, he ain't coming yet, so he ain't coming. The, the Lord's telling us right here, don't fall for that. He's coming. Don't let nobody steer you away from that. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The word perdition means damnation. Hey, but beloved, be not ignorant. Uh, no, let's skip down to verse 10. Let's skip down to verse 10. It says this, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great reward. Now, this is not, this is not talking about the rapture. That would be quick too. But this is, he's talking about the suddenness of the destruction of the earth. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and... The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Uh, 12. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So that is when this earth as we know it, as we know it, is completely blown apart, ripped apart by fire, and then reestablished. Re I want you to pay close to attention right here. Where back in verse 10, he says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away. That word pass away in the Greek means pass from condition to another. Pass from one condition to another. It never has meant in the Bible since annihilation. This earth will not be annihilated. It will be changed from what it is now by the fire of God, bone completely to smithereens, and then renewed back. Renewed back. Renewed back. It'll be changed from its condition to a condition to where now the new Jerusalem can, down, can come down from God out of heaven. That's what the scripture says in Revelation 21. So now, let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 25 says this. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, how much excuse me, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whoso's voice shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Okay, we'll stop right there. Uh, let's keep going down 28. Wherefore, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, 
Remember, he said he'll establish a kingdom that'll never be destroyed. He said that, and that kingdom will rule all kingdoms. He said that. Let us have grace and whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Okay, we'll stop right there. Now let's go to Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4. Excuse me, not 2 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And let's go to verse 17 now. Now this is, most people know this is where they, we get the rapture and so forth from. Or one of the many places. Then when we, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. Excuse me, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, that's where we say he's not going to touch this earth. This is before Revelation 19 when he comes back with ten thousands of ten thousands. So he meets the saints in the air because that hasn't happened yet. He's got to come back and purge the earth. Lock Satan up for a thousand years. Wipe out all the evil. He's got to come back and do that first before he can step foot in. That's why the rapture takes place in the heavens, in the air. It takes place in the air, not on the earth. So that's why his foot doesn't touch it until after Revelations, the 19th chapter is taking place. After that. Well, I mean, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Once Revelation 19 has taken place, he's purged the earth. The rapture happens before that. So it's, the earth is not purged. The earth is still wicked. You still have rapes and killings and thieves and liars and all that. It's still there. Satan's still running around doing what he does. So the rapture takes place in the heavens. Once that's taken, once, now once the rapture happens, and all of the tribulation and all that takes place. Then the Lord comes with ten thousands of ten thousands of his saints. In fact, let's read that. In, I think that's in Jude. Let's read that real quick. He gave diligence and delivered earnestly to continue with the dog. Uh, here it is. Uh, Jude 14, verse 14. And he, Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, Adam prophesied, prophesied of these, prophesied of this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of ten thousands to execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So, th there you have it again in Jude. Um, okay, we already read it. Let's go back to, we already went to Revelation. So, there, I think that's good enough there. We'll stop with that. Um, so, that would believe what we believe, uh, what the Lord would have us to share with you. As far as uh, the Lord stepping foot on the earth, once not until it, everything has been purged. Once He comes back with ten thousands of ten thousands of His saints and Armageddon and all that, and He wipes out the enemy there. Um, then the earth is Satan is locked up, and all the plagues have taken place. Then the thousand year millennium comes, and then that's when He comes back here on the earth again for that period of time so now that thousand years remember that is an actual our thousand years but to god it ain't but one day but in our time that is a thousand years but in god's time it's one day so what am i saying here on the earth it will be a, an actual thousand years here on the earth but during millennium heaven and earth will be connected that's why he says we'll reign with him as kings and priests on the earth will reign with him not to subjugate people and all that so don't get crazy easy oh i'm gonna be a king i'm gonna tell people what to do see that's the wrong spirit right there so it won't be like that not, not like that not with that kind of attitude no so that's what we have for you tonight i pray something was said that bless you and um edify you again we encourage you to 
share these videos, encourage somebody to watch the Q&A, send in a question. As we said in the beginning, it can be a life question, Bible question. Now, I, I will put a little bit more, a little bit more context to the life question. We're not going to go too far with that in terms of, let's say somebody, you know, sends a question, you know, I'm married and my, my wife and I, we want to do, you know, such and such in our privacy of our home. We're not going to go into all that. We're not going to do that, that kind of thing. That's, that's too far. So we won't be doing that. But other things we will, you know, other, other, like we give you some examples in the beginning of this uh, Q&A. So again, if you are a YouTuber and you subscribe through YouTube to the channel, God bless you. Thank you. If you're not subscribed, we'd love for you to subscribe. Either way, if you would please hit that thumbs up button. Like we've shared with you before, if you do that on YouTube and you watched it live, we'll come back in about 45 minutes to an hour and then do your thumbs up. Because YouTube will wipe it all out the way their filter works. It just wipes it all away and it won't get counted. It's like cashing your vote and then your vote gets thrown in the trash can. It won't count. So uh, if you want your thumbs up to count, come back in about 45 minutes to an hour. If you're a Facebook person, um, I want you to share the video. If it bless you, let it bless somebody else. Then, of course, there's the other ways. There's, uh, what is that, Instagram. You can The address you can find us is at, at FMCCMI on Instagram. Then there's Twitter, or excuse me, X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, same address, at FMCCMI. They're on uh, X. Then there's TikTok. Same address again. At FMCCMI on TikTok. And of course, the ministry's website, which is www.fmcc-mi.com. God bless you. We love you. We want to hear from you, though. We want to hear from you. If the Lord bless, we'll be back next Tuesday with another Q&A here. Um, so we want to hear from you. Tell somebody about us. Share it. We love to hear. We need. We want your questions. That's what this ministry is for. God bless you. But always remember, Jesus is coming. Let's be ready to meet him. God bless you, beloved. Take care.